Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel. Now following on from the successful test and review of the Stages R9200 dual sided power meter back in November 2022. In the last month, my focus has been on their Altegra version of that same power meter, the R8100 dual side. Now when it comes to these Shimano based power meters, I have an extensive history and a lot of experience testing these type of power meters. Starting a few years back where I was getting quite a few of them through the Llama lab and they were all reporting a little lower on the right hand side. Now my report from back in 2019 is over on gplama.com with all the details and all the data of what's going on there, along with a video from Keith Wakeham detailing exactly what's going on. In his video, Keith goes into an amazing amount of detail on exactly what's happening and why on the right hand side. Definitely one for the bike nerds, or if you really, really want to go deep down the rabbit hole with this one. So it's this right hand side problem with the Shimano chain sets that led stages down the path of redesigning the sensor placement on that side. And as seen in my review of the Durace 9200 dual sided power meter, this new sensor placement works very well. Now to let you in on a bit of a secret, this Altegra one also works very, very well. But before getting the data to confirm all of that, let's look at the technical specifications of the crank that I've had on the giant TCR for the last month. It's a Shimano Altegra 8112 speed chain set. I was running the 172.5 mm with a 5236 chain ring combination. And that comes in on the scales at 753 grams. This is a true dual sided power meter with independent sensors both sides, which are then linked up to give you total power as well as left right on your head unit. Power accuracy claimed plus or minus 1.5%. You can get to that power with AMP plus or Bluetooth. Maximum power, they claim up to 5,000 watts. I definitely can't test that. Cadence 10 through to 220 RPM with no magnet. It is worth noting that these Gen 3 units can be used with a magnet, something I haven't done yet, still on the cards to check out. Batteries, two CR32 batteries, one both sides. You get active temperature compensation. It is IPX7 water resistant, but always make sure you don't lose that little yellow seal when changing the batteries, especially on the left hand side. The right hand side is a little bit more robust with that little battery door being uh, screwed in. Firmware upgradable, device management via the Stages app, and the price point, the Altegra one, should make a lot of people happy, coming in at US $864.99, as opposed to the Durace version of the same crank set and the same power meter design, coming in at just over $1,200 US. There's also a factory install for your crank if you send it in and they put the gauges on for you, coming in at US $529. Installation of this chain set is straightforward. I've always found Shimano cranks very easy to install and with the magnetless design and no requirement to set the crank on a certain angle and register that with the unit, this is a straightforward setup. I've always said if a power meter is replacing a component on the bike, such as pedals, crank, spider, or maybe a few years back, the rear hub, it needs to at least match the performance of what it's replacing. And in this instance, it's just a straight Shimano chain set, which works very, very well. I do love the Shimano chain sets and those front rings. The shifting is absolutely flawless. From small to big, big to small, I had no problems at all over the last month, giving this crank set absolutely everything that I had. So in that respect, it's a beautiful chain set. Onto the performance of this as a power meter. Now, initially things were, well, they needed a few maintenance tasks performed. Now, I started off with updating the firmware to 1.8.2 on both sides. I enabled the gyro mode, which should give more accurate cadence at the expense of a little bit of battery life. I reinstalled the crank with a torque wrench down to 12 to 13 Newton meters with both those bolts, cinching them one to the other, to the other, to the other, making sure they're all installed correctly. Reinstalled the power pedals a few times. I switched brands of power meter pedals to verify the data that I had. I switched into a trainers from one to the other. And all while I continue to learn that testing power meters is not straightforward. And after doing all of that, things started lining up quite well. However, the data tells a better story than I can. Let's jump into five data sets just quickly that shows my experience over the last month with this meter. And it's good to be back here on my favorite website, the DCR Analyzer, where we can compare multiple power meter files as an overlay and see how they stack up. Let's get straight into it. Starting off with the Asio Majuros up against the Stages R8100 Joule back in April 21. That was over a month ago now. All right. As you can see here, quite a varied ride. Let's grab this data through here, just looking for any anomalies, any separation. 226, 228 with a few stop starts through here. All is looking good. Further into the ride, right near the end. Again, just grabbing some random sections with a few stop starts. 241, 240. Let's scroll down, have a look at the left right on that. 221, 222, 219, 217, all within spec there. And uh, as I said, with a few stop starts, you're always going to get a bit of difference. 
So that's looking fine. And into the sprint, not too bad. Uh, both reporting uh, 1181, 1171, 1192. Again, within a few watts there. And sprinting, as you'll see in the next few data sets, can be very, very troublesome. So that's looking pretty good for the first set. All right, second data set, outdoors, April 23, a few days later. Again, Asio Majuo up against the stages. We'll grab this section through here before we get to the sprints, just as a random selection. 172.8, 174. All looking good, no major separations later on to the ride. Um, there's always gonna be some jaggedness. This is unsmoothed data at one second intervals. Some sprints, perfecto, look at that. That's looking really, really good through here with the Asio Majuos and a very, very short sprint here. Sprints are usually more successful when you ride into them and then jump on the pedals rather than just sprint, as you can see through here. And I've got an example of that later on where the sprint starts almost immediately and the cadence and the recording for a very, very short sprint. It takes a few seconds for those accelerometers to know exactly what cadence you're doing, so it's not gonna be that accurate through here. Other than that, all is looking pretty good there. 176, 178 overall. Into the first indoor ride, Dorito XR up against the Rally RS this time, so switching out the Asiomas into the rallies. Now, rallies, I've got a bit of a history with those. And if you've been following my Instagram, I still have history with those trying to sprint. Vector threes and rallies and sprinting. Steady state stuff, they're great. Great triathlete pedal. Steady state, go all day. Just, you'll see in a moment what goes on here. Alrighty, now the Dorito XR, steady state into like 200, into 250, just a short one here. 223, 227, 226, all within spec. Now, I should have done a spin down on the Dorito XR. I did change the free hub on that, which just puts the watts out a little bit. You'll see in a moment. And the steady state, once I did do that to spin down, things lining up a lot better. 221, 222, 222. We'll scroll down to the left right of that. Uh, pretty much ignore the Dorito XR left right. That's just a bit of a guesstimate. 113, 114, 108, 107.98. Uh, we're not seeing any left right issues with the stages. So all is lining up. Sprint indoors. Uh, rally RS200 up against the stages. Bit too short for the Dorito to come to the party. Um, so it's about 90 watts down there, but the two meters on the bike looking good. Short acceleration into a few little jams and no major separations. 174, 176, 175.97. Again, the theme here is it's looking good. On to another Llama Lab test with a trainer that's yet to be released. So I can't tell you which trainer this is, but it is another data point with the rallies up against the stages jewel. And this was performed yesterday. So steady state into a sprint, 220, 221. And the left right power on those, 111.9, 113, 108, 107. No separation. What I was seeing in the past with those Shimano meters, it's not happening with these. Into the sprint and the rallies being the rallies didn't quite come to the party. It was only a very short sprint here. So that's ballpark what I'm sprinting at, but I don't really trust the rallies. Overs and unders, 176, 179.62 with a lot of changes in cadence. Uh, and some spikiness through here. Flywheel speed test and a few other little things through here. 206, 204.9, all looking good through there. The trainer reporting differently on the other hand. Slight little acceleration and a ride along. 194, 194. So you can see there indoors, things looking good with the rallies during steady states, maybe done in sprints for the rallies, and the stages are 8100. Okay, final data set, my ride today, May 23rd, a month later. Let's grab this set through here. Rallies again, riding along, 216, 216 with a short little hill jam here out of the saddle. A little bit of separation through here as the bike's swinging side to side. And straight after that hill jam into a steady state, which the rallies are good at. 223, 221. You can see the stop start just a little bit off there with the recording. Things looking good. Let's jump down to the left right of that. And, oh no! Not to worry, that's me being wonky because it's confirmed with the pedals 116, 118, 106, 103. Uh, you can see both of them there separated by a little bit, uh, but the total power is yeah looking really, really good. I really should have had left, right balance on screen so I could have lined that up, but that's effectively a true test of just riding along, just riding along, not trying to manipulate the data to make it look good. So total power is where it's at. Uh, a few sprints here. Hold on to your seats, Garmin maybe hold on to your cadence sensors as well because that's the rally completely. Look, there's no other way of putting it. The rally shitting themselves in the sprint there. Um, 
spike up here from the stages and I, well, I can't even compare this to anything because the rallies are just unable to handle the sprints. That's the Vector 3s and the rallies now. Never to fear, let's do another sprint right near the end and really, really give it the beans. Ring the absolute neck of these two power meters and the rally still completely fails on me in this sprint. So the stages has the characteristic spike there at the start, but who's right, who's wrong? With the rallies doing that, who the hell knows? Might be time to put the ACMs back on the bike for more sprints, but you saw in the earlier data sets, the sprints when everything works okay and your cadence sensor isn't shitting itself like it is on the rally, things are good. All right, let's wrap this up by looking at the last section of data here, riding home, 143, 144. A few little differences here as I'm clipping in or changing gears and things like that. You'll always get a bit of a spike here and there. Nothing much to worry about in the start stops, but it's a steady state that I'm after and the overall. So look at that, 143, 144. Now I haven't spoken about cadence very much. That's pretty much a solved problem, except when it comes to sprinting on the Vector 3s and rallies. Uh, but diving into the cadence between these two meters, you'll see the rallies are a little spikier than the stages. So there's some smoothing or some internal filtering going on there, which can affect the overall numbers. But as we saw with the total power, things are looking good. Okay, so there we are, my experience and the data from the Stages R8100 dual-sided power meter based on the Shimano chain set. As expected, it's on par with the Durace 9200 version using those updated sensors on the right-hand side but at a much friendlier price point at that Ultegra level. So if you want to ride a Shimano 12-speed chain set and you're not interested in power meter pedals, this version, the Stages dual-sided meter, is looking like a very, very good option. Before wrapping up today, just a few things of note when it comes to power meter testing and performance analysis. And as I'm learning, yes, I'm still learning quite a bit about this on a daily basis, there are so many variables that come into play when comparing two power meters. Starting off with the recording devices, if I'm recording with a Garmin versus an Element versus a Hammerhead, the data, even from the same power meter, can be different. So that's one to watch for. There's internal data smoothing and filtering from power meters themselves that can affect the overall performance. Uh, zero offsets, temperature compensation performance may be different between different meters, so there can be problems there. Uh, the surface that you're riding on, and again, it comes down to internal filtering from the meters themselves, that can affect the overall values, even down to the cleat positioning and your pedaling style on the bike can affect the power numbers from certain power meters. Now, even though I've done hundreds and hundreds of power meter comparisons, and I have a lot of experience with it, I'm still learning, and there's a lot of stones unturned here. But having said that, I'm very, very surprised at how close two power meters that measure power in a very different way can line up. Now these new stages meters, the dual sided meters are still relatively new, so I'm definitely keen to check out other reviews and the performance for everyone else with these meters. If you have one, let me know in the comments below. Is it performing well? I can guarantee you it's performing a lot better than a few others on the market at the moment. All right, with that, as always, if you've enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to support this channel and be alerted of new videos, and we shall see you soon.